Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're gonna to talk about dopamine withdrawal or dopamine detox. Is it real? The short answer is yes. I like to characterize it as more of a dopamine balance issue. So let's get right into some of these factors. First of all, dopamine is produced in the central nervous system and dopamine is synthesized in three different areas. Substantia nigra pars compacta, the ventral portion of the mesencephalon or midbrain, and the hypothalamus, okay? Now, there are four pathways in the brain that have uh, uh, dopamine impacts. Number one is called mesocortical, and it modulates motor activity, movement, okay? Mesolimbic is responsible for reward and pleasure. And this is what people are talking about when they talk about dopamine detox. They're really talking about reward and pleasure, okay? There's another pathway called nigrostriatal, and this is called the basal ganglia areas, or modulates motor activity and personality. So this is where things like Parkinson's uh, disease or movement disorders or Tourette's really lives something called tubro-infundibular, and that is the hypothalamus modulating prolactin, okay? Prolactin is what makes the breast larger and helps to produce milk when you have a child, okay? So those are the four major pathways, and when people talk about dopamine withdrawal, almost always they're talking about the mesolimbic pathway about reward and pleasure. So, we know where dopamine is produced in the central nervous system, but in the peripheral nervous system, it's produced in the adrenal medulla, okay, the adrenal glands, and partially in the kidneys and the T cells, your immune cells. DA, which is dopamine, in the peripheral nervous system has a sympathetic response. It increases heart rate and blood pressure, and it has responsibility in what we call renal hemodynamics, the functions of the kidney. Peripheral dopamine does not cross the blood-brain barrier. Now this is very important. It does not cross. So what is produced in the periphery does not cross into the brain and vice versa. And it's broken down peripherally if it's produced in the periphery in the brain, it's broken down within the brain. So taking dopamine, you have to make sure it has to cross the blood-brain barrier to have a central uh, effect. Now, dopamine, what does it do? It's a neurotransmitter, it's, it's responsible for physical and psychological ar ar arousal. It's a balance between pain, pleasure, movement, and reward. Small amounts of dopamine release is a constant. So your body is constantly trying to maintain just an even balance or low dopamine, okay? It's balance meaning homeostasis. Now this homeostasis can go up and down depending on what is happening, right? So if you rent, went for a, a long run, you might have a release of dopamine, okay? If you play sports and you win, you have a release of dopamine. But when you have excessive stimulation of dopamine, that's when you get into problems. So what are some of the things that overstimulate our dopamine system? Caffeine is one. Stimulants, any type of stimulants. Social media. You ever see a child check their phone every five seconds, right? They're looking for that little dopamine hit. Social media, right? So it's instantaneous gratification. Pornography or porn? Junk food, sugars, carbs will stimulate the areas that increase dopamine release. Gambling and video games. So these are the major components that will overstimulate this constant of dopamine, the low level of dopamine that we should have. So you get an overstimulation that persists and then when you have overstimulation, it's almost always followed by 
pain and depression. So people who have this issue, if you take that away from them, they will feel down. They might feel a little depressed. They might actually have physical pain or emotional pain related to eliminating this. So when we look at dopamine, it's not just pain and pleasure, but it's also movement, okay? And things that overstimulate this in general, right, are these factors leading to pain and depression on the other side. So it doesn't just go high dopamine and then come back to homeostasis. What it does, it goes high dopamine and then it goes down, okay, below the threat, uh, uh, homeostatic uh, point. In part two, we're going to talk about different signs and symptoms of high dopamine and low dopamine. And in part three, we're going to look at strategies for detox or balance, and then look at some supplements that might be beneficial for dopamine production, as well as clearance of dopamine. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.